coverage this afternoon of the arrival of the Asante Hene, King of the Ashanti, His Royal Majesty Otumfu Osei Tutu II. His aircraft has just touched down at Pyoko International Airport at the South Terminal. That's the Vista Jet that has brought His Majesty, His Royal Majesty, in fact, to Port of Spain for what will be a week of celebrations in, of course, uh, a special invitation from the Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Keith Rowley, to Trinidad and Tobago based on his visit for the uh, Ghana's independence anniversary uh, just before the pandemic. This is a special occasion for uh, His Royal Majesty. He is the 16th in line as King of the, uh, of the Ashanti Kingdom, and 50 persons are accompanying him on his visit to Trinidad and Tobago. They include Queen Mothers, Divisional Chiefs, Linguists, Umbrella, which of course is the symbol of authority for the king, as well as hornblowers, kate drummers, and dancers. And just to give you a context, uh, Ghana, as, as we know it, is some five hours ahead of Trinidad and Tobago in time. This flight was just about six hours uh, out from uh, from uh, Port, uh, Ghana to Port of Spain, landing at Piarco International. And if you want to have a little bit of context, Ghana is 47 times bigger than Trinidad and Tobago. But on this occasion, we are the big ones as we welcome uh, His Royal Majesty Otumfu Osei Tutu II, the Asentehene, to Port of Spain. Joining us on the tarmac is uh, TDT News' Mahalia Joseph Wharton. Good afternoon, Mahalia. Yes, so we are currently at the Piaco International Airport, at the South Terminal to be exact, where we are awaiting for the uh, Santa Haney to depart from the aircraft. Now, there's so many people waiting here for him. I can just tell you a couple of the ministers that are here right now. We have the Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, Randall Mitchell. We also have the Minister of National Security, Fitzgerald Hines, as well as we have some of the persons on his entourage team who would have arrived before. Now, the Asante Haney has a packed schedule ahead of him as he is also going to be a part of our emancipation celebrations as well. Tomorrow, he's expected to meet with Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, as well as the President of Trinidad and Tobago, Christine Kangaloo. As Mahalia Joseph Wharton reports to you from the tarmac, this is the quarter guard that has assembled for the official arrival of the Asante Hene, and he will be greeted at the steps of the aircraft by Trinidad and Tobago's Ministry of Foreign and Caricom Affairs Chief of Protocol. And once that introduction has been made, then he will be afforded the opportunity to be greeted by the Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs. But this visit to Trinidad and Tobago, as Mahalia has said, is such a packed itinerary with events spanning the length and breadth of our island and, of course, a great opportunity for us to see the Asante Hene. Those that are making their way to the steps at this time are all part of his delegation. And let's cross back now to see some of the moments of the special arrival of the Asante Hene, His Royal Majesty, Otumfo Osei Tutu II, to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. What you see at this time is the umbrella, which is the official uh, symbol of authority that has to be raised before the descent of His Royal Majesty down the aircraft. You're seeing here Otumfo Osei Tutu II, the Asante Hene, as he arrives in this very historic moment on the land, Trinidad and Tobago. Greeting him at this time are, of course, officials who are part of uh, His Royal Majesty's delegation. He's also greeted there by the consul to Ghana, Hilton John Mitchell. Uh, and now there's an introduction to the chief of protocol. And the chief of protocol has the responsibility to now afford an introduction to the Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs to His Royal Majesty. They exchange their pleasantries pay special attention to the fact that the symbol of authority for His Royal Majesty remains covering him for the duration of the time that he is on the tarmac. 
Now there's the introduction of the honorable ministers who are part of the official uh, ministerial delegation to receive His Royal Majesty into Trinidad and Tobago. Each of these greetings will be symbolically important. Uh, Senator the Honorable Amory Brown has the distinct pleasure on this occasion of introducing each of the uh, representatives and delegates that are here to welcome His Royal Majesty to Port of Spain. These special uh, introductions also afford the right of honor to His Royal Majesty, where, of course, he is greeted with a bow and then, of course, the shaking of hands. As he walks, notice, of course, the umbrella continues to escort His Royal Majesty for the duration of his, uh, of his, of his steps. He is then afforded the opportunity to mount the dais, and it is at this time that we should have the Guard of Honor, represented here, of course, by the, the quarter guard that has assembled. We'll listen at this time. His Royal Majesty has received a salute from the quarter guard, whilst other members of the Ghanaian arriving party are escorted to the appropriate vantage point. Very soon, he'll make his way into the uh, reception lounge here at the South Terminal at Piaco International Airport. And during the time that he's in the terminal building, it's the responsibility of Customs and Immigration to afford, of course, the necessary procedures. Uh, of course, uh, His Royal Majesty does not have to uh, go through the process in the same manner. His officials and his aides are there to attend to these requirements. And so it'll be a moment of exchanging pleasantries between our ministerial delegation and, of course, His Majesty's delegation. Trinidad and Tobago holds pride of place for Ghana, and uh, as we uh, see them making their way into uh, the lounge here at the South Terminal, uh, let's appreciate that His Royal Majesty is the 16th uh, King that's defending the Asante Kingdom. And the kingdom is recognized, of course, by historically being known as the Kingdom of Gold. Emancipation Day should really be the occasion to see the Asante Hene resplendent in gold as he witnesses the procession and the activities uh, on, the, uh, on the 1st of August at the Lijiasu Omowale village. Trinidad and Tobago, as I said, is just about 5,128 square kilometers, whilst Ghana is some 238,533 square kilometers. And if ever you've seen the Kente cloth, it's the intricately woven, hand-woven textile that takes a few days, in some cases to many months, to complete. It is originating from the Ashanti region of Ghana. Globally, the print is used in the design of academic stoles in graduation ceremonies. Trinidad and Tobago's quarter guard making their way away from the tarmac at this point as they've completed their duty of what is called officially and ceremoniously welcoming His Royal Majesty to Trinidad and Tobago. You are viewing live coverage on TDT Limited of the official arrival of His Royal Majesty Otum IV, Osei Tutu II, the Ascente Hene at Piaco International Airport at the South Terminal. Pay attention to the fact that Trinidad and Tobago's relationship with Ghana dates as far back as the 1st of July, 1881, when the 10th king of Ghana, his son, Kofinte, arrived in Trinidad. This was during wartime. And Fort George was actually designed by a true son of the Golden Stool, that is, the king's son, Kofinte, as a signal station and has been preserved ever since. On His Majesty's itinerary is a visit to Fort George, thereby once again revisiting that historic moment back in 1881 when the 10th King's son established uh, Fort George as, the, uh, as a signal station. Now, here are some similar words between Trinidad and Tobago and uh, Ghana. If you've ever heard the word susu, cuckoo, 
or names like Kwesi or Kwame, they are all Ghanaian names originating from Ghana. So let's not be surprised when we talk about a Susu in Trinidad that we're actually making reference to the Ghanaian influence in our country. And if you've had your cuckoo and Kalalu sometime this weekend, you've sampled some more of the Ghanaian cuisine. Uh, just to give you a little bit more, the Asante Kingdom is historically referred to as the Kingdom of Gold. Dance and music are the life and soul of the Asante Kingdom. It's a peace-loving nation. They've been led by their kings who have both been political and spiritual leaders and up to the present day for Ghana. The nation of Asante is administratively established under the Golden Stool. Now, whilst His Royal Majesty would not have the Golden Stool with him, that is the seat of his authority, and it is the highest authority which unites the people of Ghana, believed to be the soul of the Asante Kingdom. And the Asante Hene himself, His Royal Majesty, is the occupant of the Golden Stool. He is afforded and accorded the highest honor and respect and is the head of the Asante Nation. Otum Fu, which of course you see on your screen immediately after His Royal Majesty, is a title that translates to All Powerful or All Mighty. And it's the highest and most supreme title of titles. Just some information that you can share with those who would like to know, well, why is His Royal Majesty in Trinidad and Tobago at this time? He's a guest of the government and people of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And this is a reciprocal visit based on the fact that our Honorable Prime Minister would have been a guest of honor for Ghana's independence anniversary. I believe it was in 2020, uh, just before the uh, closure of the borders for the pandemic. As we welcome you back here in the studio, it's live coverage of His Royal Majesty Otumfo Osei Tutu II's uh, touchdown here at Piaco International Airport for his week-long visit on the occasion of Trinidad and Tobago's celebration of emancipation and, of course, the strong bilateral relationships between Ghana and Trinidad and Tobago. Specifically, over the most recent time, there have been many discussions, bilateral agreements, and other forms of memorandum of understanding between Ghana and Trinidad and Tobago around natural gas, tourism, and the development of trade and other relations. So we're in a fortunate position, and it is during His Royal Majesty's visit that there will be the opportunity for some discussions. There will be the opportunity to meet with some of the uh, leaders in various aspects of these sectors that I've just referred to, and of course, a time to celebrate with the people of Trinidad and Tobago as we prepare for Emancipation Day on the 1st of August. You will see His Royal Majesty in the procession. And this is an image, actually. These are pictures that came to us from Ghana earlier this morning of His Royal Majesty preparing to say adieu, farewell to his uh, countrymen and his uh, delegation that arrived at the airport in Ghana ahead of his six-hour trip to Port of Spain, Trinidad. So it's been a long day for him thus far. And if you're just joining us, this is TDT's live coverage of His Royal Majesty uh, Otumfo Osei Tutu II's visit to Trinidad and Tobago. The Asante Hene, of course, is here as a guest of the government and people of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Thanks, of course, for all of the images that we've received thus far. About three weeks ago, there was the opportunity for Trinidad and Tobago to officially deliver the program, the formal program, to uh, His Royal Majesty, which he received graciously. And in his response to receiving the formal program, he express expressed his excitement and desire to meet with all who are linked in any way, form, or fashion to the Asente Kingdom that are resident here in Trinidad and Tobago. When we deal with a bit of the history of Trinidad and Tobago and the relationships between uh, Ghana and TNT, we are the fortunate ones at the end of the day, based on the responsibilities and uh, uh, the, the, the prestige that the Asante Kingdom holds. The umbrella is the sign of authority and recognition of the status of His Royal Majesty, and walks with him whenever he is greeting persons in public and whenever he is there in his ceremonial role. 
And this is very important as uh, we show you images of earlier on today where he greeted the crew of the Vista Jet, the team that were responsible for bringing His Royal Majesty uh, to Pyoko International Airport. Just moments ago, touching down at the airport. And these were images from earlier on when he made his way onto the aircraft. Great information indeed. We're live here on TDT Limited for coverage of uh, the arrival of the Asante Hene, King of the Ashanti, His Royal Majesty Otumfo Osei Tutu. And just to let you know, of course, on our Now Morning program on Friday, uh, the Royal Prince was also on and chatted for some time uh, with uh, our, our, our morning, morning team, the Now Morning team, in order to give an, uh, uh, an appreciation of the 15 kings prior to His Royal Majesty, a bit more about the lineage, the relationship and the links between Trinidad and Tobago and Ghana, and of course the very important and momentous opportunity to uh, reciprocate the invitation from uh, the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago. And we're going to take a break. This is TDT Limited. We'll be back in just a moment with more coverage from His Royal Majesty's arrival in Trinidad. TDT News, nightly at 6.30. TDT News, committed, accurate, relevant. Forget, eh? Écoute moi bien. Listen, François, tell me well. My father bring me small, small from IT with the Bokra who run from we country. Run from we voodoo. Run from the power we revolution. The celebration of emancipation was more than just understanding that labor was valuable and self-owned, but an opportunity to dispel the myths that were pumped into the psyche of their enslaved forefathers. This holiday, prepare to be enchanted by a spellbinding journey into the mystic world of Ovia. Ovia. From the depths of ancient rituals to the pulsating rhythms of Calypso, experience the power of the hit classical like never before. Witness the clash between light and dark as love and revenge collide in a mesmerizing tale of forbidden desires. Be captivated by the extraordinary music as haunting melodies and exhilarating beats transport you to to another realm. Prepare to be enthralled by the awe-inspiring choreography where every movement pulsates with energy and meaning. Enter a world where mystery and love and magic intertwine, where spirits whisper secrets and dreams come alive. Get ready for a theatrical experience that will awaken your senses and leave you spellbound. Obia, a Calypso journey, the spellbinding theatrical production. Emancipation Day, 7.30 p.m., right here on TTT, Live for Local. Brought to you by the Malik Folk Performing Company. Get ready for Obia. Obia, for Obia.
We're coming up on 14 minutes after the hour of 4 o'clock on this Sunday afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us here at TDT Limited as we bring you live coverage of the official arrival of the Asante Hene, the King of the Ashanti, His Royal Majesty Otumfo Osei Tutu II to Trinidad and Tobago. 30 minutes ago, this was the Vista jet that brought His Royal Majesty to Port of Spain. And he was greeted, of course, by the ministerial delegation uh, that uh, included the Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs and the Chief of Protocol. His Royal Majesty was also uh, greeted by a quarter guard and with the greeting made his way into the business lounge here at the South Terminal of Piago International Airport, where, of course, the natural arrival procedures were being followed. Well, the monarch of the Ashanti Kingdom is the guest of honor for uh, this year's emancipation celebrations. And his visit follows Prime Minister Rowley's extending an invitation to the Asante Hene in March of 2020 during his visit to Ghana. And he was there for that country's 63rd independence celebrations hosted in the Ashanti region. About three weeks ago, His Royal Majesty received the official program for his visit to Trinidad and Tobago from the representatives on behalf of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And as he sat in his magisterial quarters, he gave his response on the receipt of the program and looking forward to coming to Trinidad and Tobago. Let's have a look. Yeah. So, I am aware that uh, there's been an invitation extended to me by the right honourable Prime Minister to, to visit uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Sure. And uh, I think my office has been preparing for that, and they've had engagements with John and uh, uh, I'm sure the parliament is also excited, being uh, that the, press, the Prime Minister was here on the 20th, 2020, um, uh, sometime on the 4th of March. Sure. The year before the 6th of March celebration. Sure. So we are all very eager to also visit Trinidad and Tobago. One, because uh, I feel it to be a part of me. Sure. And uh, my people are there, my brothers and sisters are there, and therefore it's more of excitement for me to go and see where they are. Sure. I know also the very long collaboration. George Padmore, for example, hasn't been in Ghana for all these years. And therefore, the excitement is more so where you know that people like your partner who have been here, and then Kwame Nkrumah linking up with them and all that. So uh, we believe strongly that the linkage of brotherhood and sisterhood is there. Sure. In my own personal view, being the king of Ashanti also means that I'm going to meet my people also there. Sure. Sure. To, to, to also relate to them in terms of our cultural identity and everything. And therefore, uh, uh, we all look forward to the visit. And I believe strongly that it will be... His Royal Majesty delivering remarks on the occasion of receiving the formal program uh, from the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. This would have taken place, of course, in Ghana. Now, pay attention to what you heard. At any occasion, and this is just part of the culture and part of the custom, of the Ghanaian uh, Ashanti Kingdom, that once His Royal Majesty delivers a remark, a statement of certainty, those who are in his service respond, Jo. And it is an acknowledgement, almost as how we would say, agreed, or yes, or amen, or right, as we say in Trinidad and Tobago. But it is an acknowledgement that when His Royal Majesty speaks, what he says is good. And what he says is right. These are customs, of course, that have come through many, many years. As I said, he is the 16th king, uh, the Asente Hene, and there are 15 prior to him. The son of the 10th Asente Hene would have actually journeyed to Trinidad and Tobago in 1881 and established uh, a, a substation, a first station at uh, Fort George quite some time ago. Trinidad and Tobago and Ghana have a long history. TNT's George Padmore was a special advisor to Ghana's first president, and many families of Trinidad and Tobago origin are settled in Ghana. Also take note that oil and gas exploration ties both countries in mutual collaboration. So we have the pictures here 
of the South Terminal, just outside of the lounge area, where moments from now we will see the preparation of the official motorcade making its way uh, to the South Terminal area. Of course, there's the national flag and a seat of, of authority for His Royal Majesty. And the delegation will, of course, be leaving Piaka International Airport, making their way to His Majesty's Hotel for the duration of his visit in TNT. And just to give you an idea, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, there's a courtesy call on Her Excellency Christine Kangaloo ORTT followed by a courtesy call on the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, at the Diplomatic Center. Lunch is at uh, uh, the, His Royal Majesty's discretion after the meeting with the Prime Minister. And in the afternoon, from 1 p.m. Uh, till about 3 p.m., there is the Trade and Investment Symposium hosted by the Emancipation Support Committee at the Hilton Trinidad Conference Center. Later in the evening, uh, His Royal Majesty and the delegation will be treated to dinner and a cultural show at the Diplomatic Center. And then it is on to Tuesday, Emancipation Day, where for the formal start of the Emancipation Procession, the venue will of course be the Treasury Building in Port of Spain. And there, you will hear His Royal Majesty the Asentehene deliver remarks ahead of our Honorable Prime Minister. The procession moves off from 9 o'clock from the Treasury Building, making its way to the Emancipation Village, the Lij Yasu Omowale Village of the Queen's Park, Savannah. And you should be looking out with cameras and phones to see the Asente Hene viewing the procession and sharing in a moment in the procession. Pay attention that, of course, he is expected to be in his ceremonial attire for the procession. Once uh, at the Queen's Park Savannah, the Lijiasu Umuwale village, there will be the official emancipation program starting at 2 p.m. And there's going to be a cultural presentation with special remarks, formal presentations, and recognition to those, including the Henry Sylvester Award to the Asante Haney. Later that evening, there's a reception. And on Wednesday, the Asante Haney will visit Fort George with the signing of the commemorative card, remarks by the Heritage Preservation and Research Officer of the National Trust, remarks by the Honorable Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, and the signing of a commemorative document by the Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts. His Royal Majesty, the Asante Hene, is expected to visit the Desperados Pan Theater on Wednesday. And on Thursday, he will attend a business lunch as well as attend the distinguished lecture at the University of the West Indies in St. Augustine with remarks by the campus principal, a brief introduction of the Asante Hene and a speech by the Asante Hene at the University of the West Indies Daga Auditorium. As you can see, of course, a very packed itinerary, but each of these occasions are momentous in their individual right. On Friday, as part of what I've said is the oil and gas exploration uh, mutual arrangements between Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana for quite some time, the Asante Hene and a delegation will tour the Point Lisas Industrial Estate, tour the University of Trinidad and Tobago's Point Lisas campus, and then an engagement with the diaspora later that evening ahead of his departure on Saturday, the 5th of August, from Piaco International Airport. There we're sharing with you. There's a, it, our, from our pictures there at Piaco International Airport, we can see that the weather has changed. It's been one of these very strange days for weather here in Port of Spain. In fact, most of the aircraft, as you may or may not have seen at the start, would have been arriving at Piaco International Airport from the eastern side of the of the runway rather than the traditional journey across the Caroni Plains and then of course landing from the western side and that's because there's been a huge cloud pattern that has been hovering over northwest Trinidad northwest Port of Spain for quite some time and so out of an abundance of safety most aircraft have approached from the eastern side both uh, local domestic aircraft domestic flights as well as international flights and if you've just joined us this is uh, live pictures of uh, the 
special private jet that brought His Royal Majesty Otumfo Osei Tutu II, the Asante Haney of Ghana, to Trinidad and Tobago. And we're just standing by moments from now for the Asante Haney's uh, departure from the South Terminal. And we will come back with those images right after these messages. This is TDT. We'll be right back. you can see we decided to stay with the images as the word from Piaco International is that the Asante Hene is preparing to depart from the South Terminal. Once you see the media photographers including his team it's clear that he's making his way out. There are those who carry his seat of office before him and now here comes the Asante Hene, His Royal Majesty being escorted under his umbrella a sign of his authority as he makes his way to the official car that will get him and his delegation on their way. Uh, we've lost pictures for just a moment, but it won't be short before we get him back on screen and get him into his vehicle for the movement of the delegation into Port of Spain. A uh, bit of blessings with the uh, change in weather conditions there at Piaco International Airport, but that's fine. He's in safe hands. Many of his officials have been on the island since Wednesday to ensure that all arrangements for the Asante Hene's visit in Trinidad and Tobago for the next five days are in good form. They've had the opportunity to meet with the representatives of the Ministry of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs, and they've gone through the itinerary meticulously with the Foreign Affairs team to ensure that the Asante Hene has the most enjoyable emancipation experience ever for visiting Trinidad and Tobago. And we are extremely pleased and proud as this is a momentous occasion for the ties between both countries and an opportunity for us to have yet another appreciation of the very dynamic and exciting aspects of the culture of Trinidad and Tobago that have been influenced from as far as Ghana and as far as the influence from the Asante Kingdom. There are 50 persons in His Royal Majesty's delegation and during the course of emancipation through to the week of activities that I've just shared, we'll have a chance to see them perform as well as engage and celebrate the time in Trinidad and Tobago. And we've been very pleased here on TDT to bring you, of course, live coverage of His Royal Majesty's arrival along with representatives of his delegation at Piaco International Airport. Stay with TTT. We've got lots more in store for this Emancipation Week and His Royal Majesty's visit to Trinidad and Tobago. Thanks for being with us. it is because where one and two are gathered the presence of the Lord is felt I said they sit down in the ghetto man I say I think we face too much of pain time for black people to unite listen pain up pain up pain pressure man the youth in the ghetto pain up pain we may sing a more people under pain and sorrow is pain up don't you regret your decision yeah yeah Never forget where you come from. Oh, no, 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 no. Put a West Morin, put a beat up. Listen up again. United Africa. Thank you, Nadella and Bob Marley. You want people to be free, you know? United Africa. We want to be free. Look, listen to me, For to be free. You forget, eh? Écoute moi bien. Listen François Tombi well. My father bring me small small from IT with the bokra who run from we country. Run from we voodoo. Run from the power we revolution. 
The celebration of emancipation was more than just understanding that labor was valuable and self-owned, but an opportunity to dispel the myths that were pumped into the psyche of their enslaved forefathers. Yeah. 